hello welcome to today's exciting episode of law and you i'm so glad that we're having to talk about this topic now what happens to a woman and the children when the husband divorces the wife or chases her out of the out of the house what happens to the, the, their matrimonial home how do they get shelter in this episode i'll be telling the men three ways you can lose your house if you divorce your wife that's three ways a man can lose his house if he divorces his wife please don't go away stay tuned we'll be right back 24 hours seven days a week you can find your favorite program law and you only on pinaco tv welcome back we're looking at three ways that a man could lose the matrimonial home if he divorces the wife but before we go into that have you subscribed to pinaco tv online youtube channel if you have not please you need to subscribe now and also don't forget to click the notification link so that anytime we post videos on law and you you'll be the first to get the videos hot and spicy now it costs nothing for you to not to to subscribe you don't pay anything i know there are people who have been asking how much does it cost to subscribe am i going to have to pay some money is it monthly or yearly you don't pay nothing it's absolutely free all you need to do is you see the red subscribe button it shows red uh, it's, it's on red and shows subscribe you just click on it and then boom you are good to go that's all you need to do okay so Three ways a man could lose his house if you divorce your wife in Nigeria. Now, I, I know that the, the commonest approach that lawyers adopt in this sort of situation, whether it's a matrimonial property, a man, the wife, maybe there are children, and then there's a fight, there's a quarrel, and then um, the man pushes the wife out, and then the woman petitions for divorce. What the usual lawyers usually do is to say, you know, um the house should be given to the woman because she either has contributed to the to the building of the house or the buying of the land or something and then it's usually you know um an uphill battle you know an uphill task for the woman to prove okay what did you contribute okay i bought cement how many bags i bought 200 bags any receipt um no i i i use my husband's name to buy the receipt okay well forget about that uh i bought doors i bought windows uh okay any receipt eh, yes eh, i didn't collect receipt now i just bought it bought it from a carpenter I, I gave the carpenter cash okay forget about that any other one madam can you think 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 so all that is usually a problem at the end of the day um by 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 the law as it is now the woman has to prove substantial contribution to the matrimonial home before she can get any sort of uh, relief on that on that uh, sort of score but that doesn't work most of the time it doesn't work so we want to tell you what works what you can use right at any point in time and this one will work okay the first the first thing i want to talk about is um now this one is very interesting we have in 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 nigeria a very old law called the married women's property law married women's property law it's an old law in nigeria it's one of the laws that the english people gave to us it has remained in our statute books it has not been removed but it's hardly ever looked at now recently in Oyo state the chief judge of Oyo state used that law to to remove the man from the context of the matrimonial home and implant the woman and the children okay now if you have a pen and paper you probably want to write it down it's it's the married women's property law um in some state like a and delta is cap 98 of the law you can find it in the volume four of the laws of the bender state of nigeria 1976 you know your state or abuja wherever you are you can find it too you can or you can google it married married women's property law of your state okay section 17 is what you want to look at section 17 is what you want to look at okay i just read it section 17 one says in any question between husband and wife as to the title to or possession of property either party or any bank or company in whose books any shares of either party are standing may apply in a summary way by summons or as may be otherwise prescribed by rules of court to any judge of the high court and the judge may make such order with respect to the property in dispute 
and as to the cost of and consequent upon the application as the things fit. Mm. Okay, I'll read it again. In any question between husband and wife as to the title to or possession of property, any party in a summary way may apply by summons to any judge of the High Court. And the judge may make such order with respect to the property in this food as he thinks fit. Okay, so that's simple enough. When there is a dispute between husband and wife, or okay, husband and wife, and in some definitions of the law, husband and wife, you know, there are also common law marriages. If you if you take a woman and you are living with a woman and you have children with her. She becomes your common law wife, whether you paid her dowry or not. So all those men that go, yabba, 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 I didn't pay your dowry, you are not my wife. If you have children from a woman, she is your wife. Okay, that's the one in law, we call common law wife. Okay, so when there is, you, you have children with her, you didn't marry her, and now there's quarrel. The law says either you or her can go to court to apply to the judge, what do you do about the matrimonial home? Who shall live there? Two of us can all live under the same roof. One has to go. So who has to go? By section 17, subsection 1, any judge of a high court can then decide who, as between both of you, who has to leave and who has to stay. And if you ask me, I'm not a judge, but if you ask me, the woman has, there are three children of the marriage, who is going to take care of the children? Who will the children follow? Obviously, if they are, if they are young people, they go with their mother. So, who has to go now? Who has to stay? So their mother and three children, that's four of them, should be outside. Why you alone will be inside? Okay, you miss road. You will be the one to go out. Okay, so that's number one. Number one way you could lose your house is in the event of a divorce or separation or disagreement between you and your wife. Then either party can apply to a court to decide who should stay and who should leave. It doesn't matter even if you are divorcing. This issue need not come up in the divorce proceedings. It could be either part of it or outside it. But if a claim is being made, don't forget Section 171, Married Women's Property Act. Okay, so that's number one. Number one way. Number two way that you could lose your house is under the Children's Act. Children's Act. The Children's Act. Now, you know that in 2015, we had our children and allied laws. Um, the Nigerian government made, the, they made a law to protect children. And when there is a divorce or when there is a cataclysm in the family, children are ultimately the people who suffer it. If a man is sending his wife out, he usually will send the woman, and in most instances, he will send the children along. So all of them will be homeless. So you have that situation, and then the best interest of the child will require a decision to be made. Now, we will not trust the man to make the right decision at that point. So the law will make that decision for him, okay? Now, whoever has custody of the children, we have to have custody of the house because the children will have a right under the children and allied uh, matters law children's act they have a right to shelter that's the basic right and the right of the children come before the right of the parents either or both of them in fact the law says in any proceeding where the interests of the children are involved, the interests of the children come first. So imagine the wife and the husband are cataclysm. They are in a state of uh, what our friend, uh, one of our friend of Bible, we call uh, uh, higgledy piggledy or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> anyway, whatever. So there's problem in the family. The man says, this woman, I can't live with you. You've got to go. The woman says, this man, are you the man I married? A green snake under the green grass. So there is. Ha, 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 ha. So children are between both of these things happening. Now either party apply can apply to court in the name of the children, in the name of the children, for the protection of the children, for the welfare of the children, to remain in the matrimonial home. If you don't do it, the state government can do it on behalf of the children. I.e., if the man is deemed to be the one who can take care of the children 
Fine, in the name of the woman. If it's a woman who can take care of the children, fine, in the name of the woman. But the children must have a place to stay. So that's that's number two. We're looking at number two. Um, I just read something from the children's act for you. And rights to parental care. Every child, section 14, subsection 2. Hmm. Should I read that one first? Which one do you like to hear first? All right, let's read that one first. Section 14, subsection 2. Every child has the right to maintenance by his parents or guardians. Wow. So this is not just restricted to parents, even to guardians. In other words, if you are a guardian of a child, and then you have a problem with your wife. That child <laughs> can actually apply to remain in the matrimonial home with the preferred parent. Okay? So you see that every child has a right to maintain her by his parents or guardians in accordance with the extent of their means. And the child, this is interesting, and the child has the right in appropriate circumstances to enforce this right in the family court. Boom. <laughs> the child has the right to enforce this his right in the family court. So a child can actually take either or both of his parents to court and say, I don't, I don't want my daddy coming to the house anymore. I want my daddy to stay away. He's a, he's a troublesome guy. I don't want him around. I want my mommy to be with us. And the court will actually grant the wishes of that child. Well, you may not like it, but I didn't make the law. So if you are watching this, just let me know if you like it. Subscribe to Pinaco TV YouTube channel. And let me hear your comments. If you like it, good. If you don't like it, say so too. But I didn't make the law. Mine is just to read it to you. Okay. Um, there was another section I wanted to read to you guys here. Uh, Alright, that's not section 8. Of the Child Rights Act, Section 8. This is another one relating to the right of the child of a home, of a marriage, of a family to be to, to enforce the right to live in the home. Okay. Section 8 says every child is entitled to his privacy, family life, home. Every child is entitled to his home. <laughs> okay, so if you if you have a house and that is where you bring up the child, the law says that child is entitled to that house. Okay, so try try to imagine, uh, and I'm talking about Nigerian law. Don't get me wrong; this is not uh, English law, or American law, or Canadian law, or Egyptian law. Nigerian law. These things are in our statute books. The fact that uh, you don't know about them doesn't mean they are not in our books. The fact that they are not regularly deployed does not mean they are not in our books. Now, I'm reading from the Child Rights Act, and some people may say, oh, blah, 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 that is the Child Rights Act. It is not. This Child Rights Act has been domesticated in many states in Nigeria. Many, many states. Very many states in Nigeria. So just check your state, check the provisions of the Child Rights Act, and then, you know, if you are a child, you have a problem, or you are a woman, you have a problem with the man, you are a man, the woman is, is very, very aggressive, and you want her out, you can either apply under the marriage marriage property law, or you apply under the Child Rights Act. That is number two. Now let's look at number three. Hmm, just give me a minute. All right, number three is in 2015, another law was promulgated called the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act 2015 called the VAP Act the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act 2015 now that is an act to which, which um, sort of seeks to curtail all this violence in our society you know you are driving along the road you see one person is just turning the other person into a punching bag or in the home, the wife is always constantly beating up the husband, or vice versa, you know, whichever. <laughs> okay. Now, or I mean, I, I, I watched a video of a pastor in a church who said that two church, church members who were living with him, 
you know, had had some sexual intercourse. He was so upset, he brought both of them to church and was flogging them, you know, right on the on the pulpit. You know, flogging, flogging both of them. You know, he's it not their parent, it's just that, you know, they are church members, they live with him. So, you know, verbal discipline was not enough. He had to actually resort to using the cane on these two people right in the church. So, well, okay. So, there is a law against violence, using violence on people. But we're not talking generally about violence. We're talking about how the third way you could lose your house if you divorce your wife. Okay? The third way. Now, this is the third way. By section 31 of the Violence Against Persons uh, Prohibition Act 2015, um, either spouse in a marriage could apply for what is called a protection order. So when there's violence in a marriage, either the man has been violent to the woman or the woman has been violent to the man, there could be some, some application made to court for something called a protection order. Okay, this is number one part of it, a protection order. Now, by section 31 of that law, you could, you could get a court order preventing the violent man from entering the house anymore or for the period that the court will say, don't come to the house. Because, you know, you come and you are beating up the woman or the woman is beating up the man. So the woman could apply or the, or the, the man could apply. Either party could apply. There is no discrimination. But the, the first point is that an order could be made stopping the violent partner from entering the house, the shared household. In fact, that's how the Lord described it. Whether you are the owner, you are not the owner. Whether you bought the land, you did not buy. Whether you built it, you did not build. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay, okay. But the Lord considers it. Do you share the accommodation? Yes. You live there together? Yes. Okay. One party can apply that the other one should not enter the place again. And the court can make that order for a specified period. Okay? So that's 31. Subsection 1C. Subsection 1D provides for, for the court to make an order that the violent partner should not enter a specified part of the shared accommodation. Don't enter a specified part of the shared accommodation. Okay? So that means, for example, if there are two bedrooms, there's a master bedroom and there is a, um, a what do you call it, a guest room or whatever, the court could make an order saying to the violent partner, don't go into the master bedroom anymore. You are allowed to sleep in the guest room. Okay? If the woman or the man is in the, in the kitchen cooking, don't go in there to cook. When, the, when she leaves, you can go in and cook your food. If she's in the living room watching TV, don't go in there. Stay away. Okay? So, all of this, um, all of this can be uh, uh, other applications that can be made. And better still, if the woman owns the house, she can also apply to the court to stop the man from even entering the property at all. From entering the complainant's uh, residence. Now, I know what some men watching this will be thinking. They will be thinking, ah, why which one is my own? If they stop me, I'll just sell the property. After all, it's in my name. I'll sell it to whoever I want to sell it to. Well, section 31, subsection 1G gives the court the power to make an order preventing the sale or alienation of the shared household. It could also prevent the man or woman from renouncing his or her rights in the shared household except in favor of the other party. In other words, okay, you want to sell, that's cool, but you must sell to the, to your other, to the woman or man or whoever is your significant other half. So you are only allowed to sell to her or she, if she's the owner, say, hey, you drive me out, okay, I'm going to sell the house on your head. You cannot sell to any other person, you can only sell to your, to your partner or your husband or whatever you call or your honey, or your sweetie, or your baby, whatever you call yourselves. Okay, so you can't sell to third parties, you know. The purpose is to prevent you, okay, I have a quarrel with you, you are testing me, I just leave, I just sell the house. The next day, like, like happens, you know, the woman is in the house with the children, some, some strange people will come and say, we bought this house from your husband or your ex-husband, you know, I give you some time to leave. You know, this can prevent it. So that's, that's the third way. Uh, there's something I wrote here. Okay, another beautiful one. Another beautiful one. Section 31, subsection 2C. Hmm. The courts can direct the respondent to secure 
or alternative accommodation for the complainant. So if you think you love the house so much, the court can say, okay, go and secure a house of equivalent uh, capacity or status or, or like this one, go and secure it for your wife and children to live in. And then the respondent can be ordered to continue paying the rent or the low mortgage for the house. So that is if, assuming it's a rented property, and the court has thrown the man out, or the man has gone out, the court can order the man, don't enter here, but continue to pay the rent on the property. Or if there's a mortgage with a bank or a financial society, society or association or financial organization, continue to pay as a man. That is under the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. So those are three ways that you can lose your house. The first one we talked about is under the Married Women's Property Law, Section 171. We also look at the second one, which is uh, under the Child Rights Act. A, a spouse, a partner can apply in the name of the children to retain the matrimonial home and why you will check out, okay? And then the third one, under the Violence Against Persons uh, Prohibition Act, the VAP Act, or the laws as they may exist in the state. So that's how it's been today. Three ways you can lose your house if you divorce your wife. I want you to always watch episodes of this show and don't just watch, be a participant. Let us have your comment. Let us know if you like this program. Let us know if you don't like it. If you like it, you can click the notification link, the link that says, does like that, the one that, that the thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down. We can know. If you have questions, we, we can answer them. Okay, if you have comments, you can. we have our contact details are on the screen but above all above all in order for youtube to keep this program on you need to subscribe if you watch it please you need to subscribe so that youtube can keep us on air if you do not subscribe youtube cannot keep us on air minimum we need 1000 subscribers for youtube to keep us on air and recognize us you know as a viable partner so we need you to subscribe if you love this program please click the subscription link bye bye